Today we're going to be learning about async sequences in Swift. Before we get started, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but we're going to be back in the swing of things starting this week. So first and foremost, what the heck is an async sequence? The TLDR is basically, imagine you have a for loop such as for thing in things, and for each of these things, you want to perform an async piece of work. So the simplest example is a API call. So traditionally, you would use something like a dispatch group, for those of you that are familiar, to be notified in aggregate when all, perhaps let's say 10 of these things are done. Because the work is done in parallel, we need a dispatch group to observe and to be notified when everything is done. Async sequence is a paradigm where we can accomplish the same thing, but in a much nicer way. So we're going to do an example and then we'll talk through it as we write it out as well as at the end of it. So the first thing we actually need to do is create uh, two objects. The first one is going to be a data sequence. And the second thing is going to be a data iterator. Now, why did I call it a data sequence and data iterator? Well, in our case, in this example, we're going to be using a URL string, which I've taken the liberty of copying uh, beforehand to fetch data from perhaps, let's say, 10 of these URLs. You can tell by the URL we just get a random image back every time. So that's what we're going to do in today's example. Now, the data sequence and data iterator both need to conform to a protocol. Now, this one here is going to conform to async sequence, what a surprise, and this one here is going to conform to the async iterator protocol. Now, both of these uh, objects are going to work hand in hand. The first one here, we're going to hit fix for these protocol stubs. We're going to specify two things. We're going to specify the elements that we're going to get back from our iterator, which will be data, and we can actually get rid of this async iterator type alias, and we're going to start typing out make iterator. And we're essentially going to create and return this data iterator from down below. Now, because we want this iterator to be able to take in a collection of URLs, we're going to also go ahead and toss a URLs property on here. And we're going to create the related constructor as well. So we'll say URLs takes in a collection of URLs just like that. And we're also going to pass this down into our iterator. So just do it like that for the time being and bear with me, we'll fix all these errors. So similarly, we're going to hit fix here on these protocol stubs. We'll give this the same type of data. And in the actual iterator, we're going to want to implement the next function. Now this function is basically, as the name implies, responsible for iterating to every next element in the thing you're iterating over. Now in this case, we're going to be iterating over a collection of URLs that we're going to make an API call to every single time. So that being said, this should be a signal that we're going to want this uh, property and constructor here as well. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste it. And we're going to want two more things in here. One of them is going to be an index, and this will basically keep track of which URL we're currently at. And the other thing we're going to want in here is a URL session. And we're just going to use the shared session every time. So we'll say URL session dot shared, but I'm just going to toss it up here for the sake of cleanliness in our code. The other thing that we'll need to do before we implement this is make this function mutating since we're going to change the value of this index every time this next function is called so we can actually iterate. Now, what are we going to want to actually do in this next API? So we're going to want to do a few things. First, we're going to check the bounds of our uh, index to make sure within bounds. We're going to get the URL and increment the index. We're going to perform the API call, and then we're going to return data. Now you'll notice this function already gave us a return type of data optional. And the reason that the compiler knew that we're going to do that is because we said the type alias for elements here will be data. And in some cases, it's going to be null. So it's data optional. Now, in what cases will it be null? Well, it's actually the first case right here. So we're going to go ahead and say guard that our index is less than URLs uh, count. And the reason we're doing that is because if the index is the same length, then we're overflowing the array of URLs. And if it's greater than, then that's, of course, a red flag that we are out of the range. So we're just going to return nil in there. Now, per our comments, the next thing we want to do is get the target URL. So we're going to go and say URLs, and this will be index. 
Second, we're going to increment our index, so we'll say index plus equals one. And again, if you're doing this without the keyword mutating, you're going to get an error because we are inside a value type, aka a struct, and this function must be annotated as mutating. The next thing we're going to do is actually dispatch the API call, and it's going to be a data underscore. We're going to say try and await from our URL session, and it'd be great if I spelled that right. And we're gonna go ahead and say, give me data from a URL. I believe it is this one right here. So this one is data for a request. We're looking for data from, let's see, oh, it's the first one right here. We'll pass in URL, delegate will be nil, and I want to say we can actually get rid of this and it won't yell at me and we'll see. And now that we actually have uh, the data back inside of here, it's going to give us a warning and say, hey, we're not actually using it. And that's where the last piece comes in. We're going to go ahead and say return data. And that's actually all there really is to the implementation of async sequence. Now, let's see why this guy is yelling at me here. It should go away momentarily. We're passing in URLs here. Sometimes the... Uh, playground environment is just not that great. So if you go ahead and just hit the little play button down here, we'll see if it actually sticks around. You can alternatively hit fix and see uh, if that does its job. We'll get rid of it. And I believe it should be good to go since we've conformed to everything down here. Um, let's see. Oh, we would need to actually change the return type here. That's why it's yelling at us. We're returning a data iterator instead of some async iterator and we're good to go. Now let's actually take a look at the call side of this and what it would look like as opposed to something like a dispatch group that I mentioned before we started. So let me just add a call site comment here, AKA usage. Now, because this is a async piece of work, we're gonna do it in a task and uh, disclaimer that this type of work is flaky in a playground environment, but is fully reliable in production and you know in your Xcode project. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create URLs. So I'm just gonna create uh, the string that I had first. So we'll go ahead and toss that here. Whoops, let's go ahead and fix that. The next thing we're going to do is create a couple of URLs and I'll do that in a loop here. So we'll say URLs is going to be array from zero to 10. And we're gonna go ahead and map this. And we are going to uh, more or less uh, return a URL with a string and this will be dollar zero actually instead of dollar zero but we want to actually return is this guy since it's not an integer now this gives us a, uh, a nullable an optional URL back so we're just going to compact map it right before we finish this piece and that'll give us a collection of URLs I'll actually explicitly also note it here for everyone to see and now we can actually use our async iterator thing up here. Now we called it a data sequence. So we're going to say for uh, try await data in our data sequence. And this guy's going to take in URLs. And basically the beauty of this is now you have access to data. So we can like print out data.count for example. Now, a couple things to note. The first thing to note is I have a silly error up here for some reason. So let me actually see what's going on. This should be underscore in. Let me just line break all of this so it's actually legible somewhat. All right. And just like that, it's looking good. I believe our error should go away. Beautiful. So we've basically just taken uh, some numbers here and mapped it to URLs. And down here, instead of having to do dispatch group and group enter and group leave and all that, what we can do now is use async sequence, the protocol that we get now out of the box, and we can create this iterator to do all this work for us. Now, it simplifies your code at the call side. It's debatable that it actually makes your code more complex in the iterator. Personally, I think it's a really great addition to Swift and just the async await paradigm since it drastically cleans up what you need to do here. And the reason I say that is, a lot of times in complex scenarios, you might have multiple pieces of concurrent work happening at the same time. So what I mean by that is you might say, uh, you know, API call, and let's say it's a closure, and then there's something like process API call, which let's say is also async, and then there's a closure. So then there's this weird question of where do you put group.leave? Do you put it in the innermost closure if you're using a dispatch group? Do you put it here? Do you put it in a defer block? So on and so, so forth. So async sequence in a nutshell, hopefully this example was clear. 
Just to recap before we wrap up the video here, you start by creating something that is in async sequence, you provide a type alias for the element, in our case we're taking in some URLs, you create an iterator of that concrete type, which will be a async iterator protocol, in this case we specify the element again, we keep track of the index, URL session, again the constructor for our URLs, and the only function we need in here is the next function. We check the bounds of our array and index, we get the URL, we increment our index, we create the actual API call and dispatch it. Keep in mind that this itself is the async piece of work, and the reason we know that is we're saying try await. Of course, this was analogous to something like a data task with URL with a completion handler, like a closure, and then we finally return the data. And that way we can use it in our for loop here with async sequence. So that is all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't dropped a like, make sure to do so. Um, again, I apologize for being MIA for the past, I think like two weeks now. Let me know in the comments what you guys wanna see. I plan a bunch more videos this coming week. Hit subscribe if you're new and haven't done so already into iOS and wanna stick around. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.